Welcome back to the AR-15 Barrel Series. Today, we'll be taking a look at a 16-inch stainless steel barrel from Proof Research that was loaned to the channel from Black Ark Munitions. So a big thank you to Black Ark for helping out with this video. First, we'll go over the specs. Then, we'll give the barrel a brief inspection. And after that, we'll head to the range and shoot some 30-shot groups. So the barrel is 16 inches, made from 416R stainless steel. It has a 223 wild chamber, mid-length gas, 1 to 7 inch twist with half by 28 threads, and 4 groove single point cut rifling. Moving on to the inspection, we'll start out with some gauging. Here is the throat gauge, and this barrel is starting out at a 1 on this gauge. Next, we'll check the headspace with Forster headspace gauges and a stripped JP bolt. And as a brief note, proof barrels are guaranteed for headspacing to the specifications of the JP Enterprise enhanced bolt. So we'll see what we get here. And the bolt is able to lock in place with the go gauge, so it passes. And next we'll move on to the no-go gauge. And the bolt is not able to lock in place, which means that the barrel passes the no-go gauge as well. Next up, we'll check the chamber and throat dimensions with this 223 wild chamber function gauge from Pacific Tool and Gauge. First, we'll make sure that there's nothing wrong with the gauge by checking it in a new Criterion core barrel, and the bolt locks in place just fine. Next, we'll check the chamber of the proof barrel to make sure that there's no debris in there that would give a false reading. And everything looks fine to me. So, we'll go ahead and try the gauge in the proof barrel. And the bolt is not able to lock in place. So, this means that the proof barrel fails the chamber function gauge. Moving on to the barrel extension. It measures a little bit oversized, which will make for a tight fit with the upper receiver, but may require some heat for insulation on receivers that are on the tighter end of the spec. And here's how the barrel extension diameter compares to the others that I've measured so far. The gas block journal diameter measured exactly at the nominal size, which should make for a good gas seal with the gas block. And here's how that compares with the other gas block journals that I've measured so far. Next, we'll check out the inside of this barrel with my Teslong bore scope that was kindly provided by Teslong. And we'll start out here by looking at the body of the chamber. And everything looks fine. There really isn't much to look at here. Moving up to the neck of the chamber, we have these interesting looking tool marks. I haven't really seen anything quite like this before. And if we switch to a straight view of the bore scope, you can see that the tool marks are left at regular intervals. They don't look very deep at all, so I don't think these marks will cause any sort of issue, but it makes for some interesting looking uh, board scope footage. Anyway, here we are at the throat, and this throat looks to be cut a little bit more rough than I would have thought. You can see the roughness on the right side of the rifling lands. The rifling looks to start pretty even on all sides, but the right side of the rifling doesn't look too great. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison with a new barrel from a Seekins Precision. And you can see that the Seekins barrel doesn't have the roughness on the right side of the rifling lands. Anyway, moving on. The rifling looks great, very clean. No issues here that I see. And we'll move up to the gas port. And the gas port looks fine, nothing much to see here. And here we are at the crown, where we have some more stuff to look at. There looks to be some horizontal ridges on the rifling lands close to the crown. It's hard to tell exactly what's going on here and how tall or deep these marks are. But we'll see if it shows up in the groups or not, I guess. According to the Proof Research website, their barrels do not require a break-in process. However, they do provide a break-in guideline in the barrel manual. So, at the request of Black Art Cunitions, I did perform the break-in process as was outlined in the barrel manual. And if you're curious like I am, here is how the throat looks after the break-in process. There is a little bit of wear starting in the rifling just past the throat, and the right edges of the rifling lands and the lead still have some roughness to them but it does look cleaned up a bit. Anyway, that's how things looked after the break-in. Next, we'll go over the shooting setup. The barrel was fitted into an upper receiver from Bad Attitude Department with a BCM MCMR rail and a Psyonix bolt carrier group. The threads were greased and the barrel nut was torqued to the manufacturer's torque specification. The handguard was fitted with a three inch front bag rider. The stock was supported by a rear bag. An A5 buffer system was used with an A5-2 buffer and spring code green spring. No muzzle device was used to prevent possible interference. Trigger is an AR Gold from the American Trigger Company. The bore was fouled with a few rounds before starting the first group. Scope is a DNT Optics The One 7-35 by 56 with a 34mm main tube, 110 MOA of elevation adjustment, and Japanese XED glass. The DNT Optic is mounted in a reptilian mount that was supplied by Danger Space LLC. The mounting clamps were torqued to 45 inch pounds and the rings to 15 inch pounds. Parallax was set using a head nod test. A Garmin 0C1 Pro chronograph was used to collect velocity data. A Mantis X10 Elite is mounted to the front of the handguard to keep track of rifle stability and detect any possible shooter-induced flyers. Groups were measured using the Ballistic X app. 
Each group is 30 shots fired consecutively over about four minutes. This simulates a match or practical type scenario where the barrel will get some heat into it, and it will also give us a decent sample size to work with. Between each group, I used a chamber chiller and leaf blower for cooldown. Distance was 100 yards. Point of aim was a small circle at the bottom of the target. Point of impact was set a few inches higher to preserve the aiming point. Wind was monitored with a ribbon. Each 30 shot group took about four minutes to shoot and was edited down to about 15 seconds. Today, I'll be shooting three groups. First is Winchester 55 grain M193. And after that, we'll have a mini ammo comparison with three different loads using a 77 grain Serum Match King. We have IMI Razor Core 77 grain. After that will be Federal Gold Medal. And the last load was provided to the channel by Black Arc Munitions, and it's their NAS3 262 Alpha load with 77 grain at Sierra Match Kings. And before we get started, for your reference, here is the best 30 shot group that I've shot with an AR 15 on video so far. It was with the Sons of Liberty Gunworks SPR barrel shooting Hornady 73 grain ELD match. Also, Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives gave me the opportunity to shoot his custom bullet action from Phoenix Custom Rifles, and here are three 10 shot groups from that rifle. All right, with that all out of the way, let's do it. Okay, starting things out with the Winchester M193. This stuff always puts out some interesting results. And by interesting, I mean disappointing. I don't shoot this ammo because I think it will group well. It just always makes for an interesting comparison seeing how the bulk FMJ load compares to higher tier ammunition. But we'll see if the proof will be the first barrel to put up a halfway decent group with this stuff. Anyway, shooting felt fine on my end. Not that I'm a perfect shooter, but I didn't have any significant concerns with any of the shots. Recoil felt a bit stout for a 16 inch mid length. Brass was also ejecting a little forward. Wind was calm, like it usually is, and things go surprisingly decent for the M193. We ended up with a fairly roundish group with one outlier to the left. Uh, but yeah, for M193, this isn't looking too bad. So we will finish up the group and then take a closer look. Okay, starting out with the velocity summary. The Winchester M193 out of the 16 inch proof barrel had an average velocity of 3,125 feet per second, which is pretty quick for a 16 inch barrel. And this gives us 1,192 foot pounds of muzzle energy, which is pretty decent. The velocity standard deviation was a bit high at 30 feet per second. Rifle stability looked fine with an average score of 99.6 and a low score of 99.2. The fastest shot of the group was shot number two and the slowest was shot number seven and we ended up with a group that is a little bit taller than it is wide. And there's also shot number 25 out there on the left by itself. Everything felt fine with that shot, and the data looked fine, so that's just where it ended up. Before going over the group stats, we'll go over my AZ score for the new folks. So AZ is an acronym that stands for A Zone Equivalence Distance, and it gives you the maximum distance where the calculated group size would still fit into a USPSA A Zone. The reason why I use this score is because it's easier for me to make sense of the group numbers compared to looking at the raw mean radius numbers. Anyway, we ended up with a 30 shot group size of 3.648 MOA with a mean radius of 0.955 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 148 yards. Or if you want some more conventional numbers to look at, if we break the 30 shot group down into three 10 shot groups, the average 10 shot group size is 2.8 MOA. And here's how this compares to the other groups that I shot with the same lot of M193 ammo. And the proof has put up the best group with the Winchester M193 with an AZ score of 148 yards coming in front of the Daniel Defense, which had an AZ score of 127 yards. So, as you can see, the Winchester M193 hasn't put up the most impressive groups for me, but the proof has put up the best group with it so far, although this is the first stainless steel barrel that I've shot with the M193. So, make it that way you will. Anyway, let's move on to the next group. All right, moving on to the first group with the 77 grain Zero Match Kings. This is the IMI Razor Core, which seems to be fairly popular. I've shot a decent amount of this stuff and it performs okay. You'll notice that the group ends up a little bit higher on the target than I would normally prefer, but all the shots stayed on paper, so it's not that big of a deal. However, after the group, I did adjust the scope down to MOA. So keep that in mind for the next group. Anyway, shooting felt fine again on my end for this group. Brass is continuing to eject forward and the bolt velocity feels a bit fast. Wind was calm, per usual. The Mantis missed several shots, so that was less than ideal. But the Garmin captured velocity for all the shots, and we end up with a pretty decent looking group. So we will finish with the group and then take a closer look. All right, so the IMI Razor Core had an average velocity of 2,665 feet per second, which gives us 1,214 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. And the SD was pretty good at 19 feet per second. Rifle stability looked fine with an average score of 99.7, with the least stable shot coming in at 99.3. Although the Mantis was having a bit of an issue and wasn't able to get a recording on several shots. Anyway, shot 17 was the slowest and shot 25 was the fastest. And we ended up with a pretty decent looking group. Obviously it's a bit taller than it is wide, 
but it looks pretty respectable to me. 30 shot group size came in at 1.979 MOA with a mean radius of 0.529 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 267 yards. And if you want to break that down into 10 shot groups, the average 10 shot group size is 1.0 MOA. And if we compare this to the other groups that I shot with the IMI Razor Core, the proof barrel comes in on top again, this time just narrowly beating the CLE BART line by just 5 yards. So another good showing by the proof barrel. Anyway, let's move on to the next group. Okay, third group of the day, and the second group with the 77 grains here Match Kings. Here is the Federal Gold Metal Load. This stuff usually puts up some pretty good groups, although velocity is usually on the lower end. Recoil felt a little bit lighter with this load, like it usually does, but brass was ejecting a little forward of 3 o'clock. Shooting felt fine on my end. I didn't have any concerns about any of the shots. Wind was calm. The Mantis missed two shots, and the Garmin was able to get velocity data on all the shots, and it shapes up to be a pretty decent looking group. So we will finish up here and then take a closer look. Before moving on, I would like to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy the content and found it useful, it would help a lot if you could tip the channel with a $2 super thanks so I can buy more ammo and equipment to help grow the channel. Thanks, let's get back to it. All right, so the Federal Gold Medal had an average velocity of 2,476 feet per second, which gives us 1,048 foot-pounds of muzzle energy, and the velocity SD was a little bit higher than expected at 31 feet per second. Rifle stability looked fine with an average score of 99.7, and the least stable shot scoring at 99.2. Looking at the velocities, shot 1 was quite a bit faster than the rest, with a velocity 72 feet per second faster than the average, and that shot ended up at the top of the group. The second fastest shot was only 39 feet per second faster than the average. Other than that, there didn't appear to be any other anomalies with the velocities. And looking at the group, we ended up with a pretty solid group. And just as a note, with groups like this, where it ends up being kind of one large hole, it can be a little bit difficult to exactly place where each shot landed on the target. The target camera and editing software help out a lot with this because I can overlay the final target on top of the developing target. But even so, there were a few shots where I had to take an educated guess as to exactly where the shot landed on target. Anyway, we ended up with a 30 shot group size of 1.257 MOA with a mean radius of 0.373 MOA, which gives us an impressive AZ score of 378 yards. And if we break things down into 10 shot groups, the average 10 shot group size was 1.0 MOA. And if we move on to the leaderboard for the Federal Gold Medal 77 Grand Seer Match Kings, the proof barrel is again on top, this time by a decent amount, with an AZ score that's almost 60 yards ahead of the Roscoe. So, things are continuing to look good for the proof. Anyway, let's move on to the Black Arc. Alright, moving on to the fourth group of the day, and the third group using the 77 Grand Seer Match Kings. This is the Black Arc NAS3 262 Alpha with Shell Shock Technologies cases. And this ammunition was provided to the channel by Black Arc Munitions, so a big thank you to them. The Shell Shock cases allow for more case volume, which in turn allows for more powder to be put inside. So, one of the advantages of this ammunition is that it's rated at a higher velocity than other brass case ammo. Anyway, recoil felt similar to the M193 and IMI Razor Core loads. The cases were mostly ejecting forward again. Shooting felt fine on my end. Wind continued to be calm with this group. Both the Mantis and Chrono collected data for every shot. And we end up with a bit of an awkward looking group. It's kind of a slash from high left to low right. But anyway, we'll finish up here and then take a closer look. Okay, so the 262 Alpha clocked in with an average velocity of 2,790 feet per second out of the 16 inch barrel, which gives us 1,331 foot pounds of muzzle energy. And we also had a pretty solid velocity SD at 18 feet per second. Rifle stability looked fine with an average score of 99.7, with the least stable shot scoring a 99.2. Shot 29 was the slowest, and shots 3 and 12 were the fastest. And the group looks pretty good, although we do have some shots going high and left and also low right. Not entirely sure what that's about, but we'll keep moving forward. And we ended up with a 30 shot group size of 1.638 MOA, with a mean radius of 0.415 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 340 yards. And if we break the group down into three 10 shot groups, the average 10 shot group size was 1.4 MOA. Looking at the overall results, the Federal Gold Medal had the best group with an AZ score of 378 yards, with the Black Arc 262 Alpha coming in second at 340 yards followed by the IMI Razor Core at 276 yards, and of course the M193 coming in last at 148 yards. 
So the top three loads were all shooting a 77 grain Sierra Match King, and there was a pretty big velocity spread between them, with the Federal Gold Medal having the slowest velocity at 2,476 feet per second, and the IMI Razor Core at almost 200 feet per second faster at 2,665 feet per second, and the Black Arc almost 130 feet faster than the Razor Core at 2,790 feet per second. And you can see the effect that velocity has on muzzle energy, with the Federal at only 1,049 foot-pounds, compared to the Black Arc at over 1,300 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. Velocity standard deviation was also interesting. Federal Gold Medal had an uncharacteristically high SD of 31 feet per second, and the IMI and Black Arc had pretty solid SDs at 19 and 18 feet per second. Looking at the best group leaderboard, the Proof Barrel comes in third place with its Federal Gold Medal group, behind the Sons Liberty Gunworks SPR Barrel in first place, and the CLA Bart Line in second place. Although both of the other barrels shot their best groups with a different ammo, the Hornady 73 grain ELD match. I think doing a head-to-head -head matchup with the Suns SPR barrel versus a proof barrel would be pretty neat, but instead of these exact barrels, maybe get 18 inch six arc barrels for both. So let me know if you think that would make for a good video. But don't expect that to come anytime soon. My schedule is absolutely packed for the next two months, and it'll also take me a while to facilitate getting both of those barrels here at the same time. So you're gonna have to be patient. Anyway, again, a big thank you to Black Arc Munitions for loaning out the proof barrel for the video and also for providing their NAS3 262 Alpha. I thought that made for a pretty interesting comparison with the other 77 grain Sierra Match King loads. Anyway, I think that'll do it for now. I'll see you next time. Later. All right. Are you ready? ready? Stand by. Richard has one of those. I need to get one. Wait till the next stage play. Hit. Hit. On the next stage? Nice run. You're finished. Unload. Show clear.